Alright, what's up y'all? So, fellas, there were two uh, public figures in the news this past uh, week. And we have Diddy in the news for starting his new school. And we have, in Harlem, and we have Colin Kaepernick, who's in the news for um, not standing during the uh, national, was it the national anthem? It was the national anthem, right? So, I want to get your thoughts. We, we saw these things go down. What are your thoughts, especially as far as, as it pertains to what young black um, people can learn from these situations, implement into their daily lives, etc.? Well, for me, it's the thing I was thinking about. <laughs> well, you gotta be polite, man. But, uh, <laughs> no, I, I thought about a quote in relation to this uh, Colin Kaepernick situation in particular. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I was telling you about it before. Uh, it's an audio book I've been reading. Pause. Audio book I've been listening to uh, by uh, Earl Nightingale called The Strangest yeah. Secret. <laughs> and, <laughs> and in it, he quotes uh, like a 20th century uh, psychologist. Uh, where he says that courage, um, the problem with our society today, the opposite of courage is not cowardice, but conformity. And um, in, regard, in relation to this Kaepernick situation, um, the thing I most appreciate is that he was willing to take a stand. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I find that you know too many people, especially athletes, are not really willing to stand up for what they believe in. Mm -hmm. You can argue whether that was the right place or that was the right context for him to do that, but he chose to do it, and I applaud that he did it for a purpose. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I even applaud that it wasn't even like he wasn't trying to make a big deal of it, because he did it twice before, two other games before. Um, he just wasn't playing, so nobody noticed. Mm -hmm. And he never said he was going to do it. He didn't publicize anything. But when people came and asked him, he was able to eloquently state why he did it and you know what was the reasoning behind it. And so for me, just don't be afraid to stand up for what you believe or to sit down for what you believe um, when it's the right situation. Yeah, peacefully. Uh, because really that's what this country is built on. It's not built on everybody agreeing with one another, but it's built on dissent. It's built on the opportunity to disagree um, with you know your fellow citizens and doing that in a respectful way. And so, you know, for me, I think that's the biggest takeaway. Okay. Uh, just be willing to not conform. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Don't be afraid to stand out. Randall, what, yeah. what, what should they take away from these two? P. Diddy, right? Well, he's just Diddy now. And Colin Kaepernick. What, which one do you want to speak on? Go, let's, let's, let's hear what they, what they should learn. Yeah, so, so I'll probably speak on both. Uh -huh. um, one thing that I want to say about Colin Kaepernick is that um, when you take a stand for something and you put yourself, your pride, your, mm -hmm. um, you know, your, your assets, your you know, your endorsements, mm -hmm. all of that at risk, you know, that, that is a true stand, mm -hmm. right? I, I think it's easy, easy for anybody to, uh, you know, uh, denounce this and that mm -hmm. when their job isn't going to be in jeopardy. Okay, so it's easy for people to say um, and disagree with somebody behind closed doors or behind a computer mm -hmm. and and not have to deal right, with potentially right. losing Ooh. their job, losing yeah. the trust of, of yeah. their, their colleagues, yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe getting uh, you know let go from the team, yeah. from the job. But to do that in spite of the, of the risk mm -hmm. that's being posed to his very livelihood, I think it's something that we should be applauding. Like Paul said, I mean, that, that is the essence of, of what it means to be a free person in this country, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and I think one of the other lessons that, that I, I want uh, young people to, to cut, get across is being a leader is important, but sometimes being a leader means being second to act, mm -hmm. right? So think about how powerful that would be if one of his teammates stood with him, mm -hmm. right? Because right now the focus is on him. Mm -hmm. Why? Because mm -hmm. nobody really, right, right. right on the right. periphery, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. On the periphery, yeah, people are supporting him, um, say he's doing a good thing. But think about how powerful it would be if if his owner stood mm -hmm. with him, yeah. right? Think about if his coach <laughs> sat with him, right? How powerful that mm -hmm. would be. So it's one thing to be the first, mm -hmm. And there's a video, so there's a TED Talk on this, so props to, to the man who did the TED Talk on how to start start a movement. Um, but sometimes that, that initial 
uh, lone nut. Mm -hmm. He stood up for something that mm -hmm. nobody else, that everybody else thought was crazy. He's over glorified. Mm -hmm. It's that person, that second person who comes mm -hmm. in and affirms that mm -hmm. individual mm -hmm. that really mm -hmm. causes this movement to, to start and, and get rolling. So, um, you know, don't be afraid to stand with somebody who represents something that you believe in. Um, and, you know, in terms of Diddy, uh, just to kind of connect the public figure yeah, thing, yeah. I think, you know, a part of being a public figure is uh, kind of submitting yourself to uh, criticism, mm -hmm. right? Um, everybody feels like you ought to be a certain way, and, and, and actually you, you tend to see yourself through the lens of other people, mm -hmm. right? You can't just be yourself. You have to constantly be in a state of dual consciousness, right? Um, and... The fact that Diddy and rappers, you know, are, are typically the, the brunt of criticism when it comes to, you know, being active, being engaged in the community, actually providing solutions for people in the community. Diddy, who's all of those things, actually took a step to doing that and addressing a very real problem um, in, yeah. in, in his own community. So, um, yeah. So now, so, and, and I want to tie this in because I want them to make, I want to make sure that y'all learn like what we're doing here is so that you can take these principles and incorporate them into your day to day, right? So you can go back in this video and hear some of the principles that were shared and incorporate. How does that fit into your life? Okay. Now, I'm thinking when I think about Diddy and when I think about Colin, here, Colin, you have a person who they're pointing out the problem. And one of the arguments that you said that was, was coming against him was that that he's pointing out the problem, but he's not bringing a solution. Well, you're kind of uh, excuse the expression, but damned if you do and damned if you don't. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, people are going to complain anyway, but there are some people who are good at pointing out the problem, and Colin is doing that in a respectful way. So there might be instances in your life where you're called on to be the person to point out the problem, right? You, you may not know the solution, but you can at least, for instance, the reason why we call 911 is because we don't, we don't got the solution to certain problems, but we know we see a problem, and so we dial 911. So if you're in a position to where you can call out, you see a problem, you see an injustice, or you see something that's, that, that doesn't look right, don't be afraid to be the person to step out, take the brave step, and call out that, yo, there is a problem going on, all right? And when, that could be in your, your school life, you know what I'm saying? Maybe not, you're having problems in your academics. Make it known, call out the problem, because it's not, you can't solve the problem until the problem is being called out. And then you also, some of you though are in positions like Diddy to where, um, you not only can solve the problem, but you can bring a solution to the problem, right? And so Diddy is now in a position to where he can help solve the problem by using his resources in order to develop a school. And so I think that's important. Um, um, and I think one of the most important things is that when we talk about solving problems, especially the type of problems that we're seeing in our country today, a lot of those will call, um, you know, courage, being a person of courage, being a person of character, right, often calls for you to lose something. Right? It often calls for, calls for some sort of sacrifice. And so when you see Colin Kaepernick, people are like, oh, he's just calling out the problem. No, he's making a serious sacrifice because he, might, he could potentially lose endorsements. Um, there are other things that he could lose that other people, they're not trying to lose that kind of stuff, right? So, so, so kudos to him for being willing to take the stand. And um, listen, don't let the fear of what you might have to sacrifice keep you from calling out problems, keep you from calling out injustices, and keep you from bringing solutions to the problems where you're able to. Yeah, for sure. uh -huh. and, and just to add on to that, I think one other thing and a common criticism is that, well, why didn't he sit down before, right? Um, so why is he just now fully recognizing and speaking out against this issue? I think for anybody, and even if you look at this country's history, I mean, there, there's nothing but examples of how over time people became more either empathetic to the issues that a particular community, community was talking about or more informed about the issues mm -hmm. through their own life experiences um, that they finally got to a place and equipped themselves uh, to the point where they could take a stand and mm -hmm. actually be calculated and, and intentional about it, mm -hmm. right? So, so if you see an issue, it's, it's okay to take some time to really understand how to authentically engage in the uh, being a part of that solution, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It, it, it's not being hypocritical. It's simply just really taking in all of your life experiences to this point mm -hmm. 
and making sure that whatever platform you're given in life, that you're, you're maximizing it and taking advantage of it as best as you know how to. There you go. <laughs> so we'll leave y'all with that for this episode um, and we, we got some other things that we're going to discuss so be on the lookout alright peace